are two different types of components that we will be talking about in this video, through-hole and surface mount. Through-hole consists of a component with physical metal leads. This method of soldering is easier in some cases, but requires a PCB that to have a usually large hole, as well as taking up a larger footprint on the PCB. Surface mount components usually have the majority of their pads flat, where you can solder them onto the PCB on a single side. These components can be significantly smaller than the through-hole components, but due to their size, they can be much more challenging to solder. We'll be first looking at soldering through-hole components with this small PCB board I have. First, let's go over some generally good practices while soldering. Due to the size of the component's holes, it's usually a good idea to use larger width solder, such as 0.8 millimeter. It's also a good idea to assemble components by height, or how tall the component is when it's mounted onto the PCB. For example, we have resistors, a diode, headers, and transistors. The diode and resistor have roughly the same height, but the transistors and headers are much taller. To make it easier to solder, we will solder these at increasing altitudes. Diodes have polarity. As you can see on this one, there is a black stripe on one side. The silk screen on the PCB also has a white stripe on this side. So in order to make sure the polarity is correct, you should align this black side with the white stripe on the PCB. We first bend that leads this way so it can fit on the lead PCB and we align the holes and just push it in. After we kind of align it properly, we just flip it over and press down. This way, as you can see from our alignment, it's perfectly facing up and we don't need to hold it down while soldering. I'm currently using 0.8 solder, but 0.6 or 1.0 millimeter will also work. So first, I place the solder close to the intersection of the lead and the pad, and then I apply heat, and basically melt the solder. Sometimes it will take some extra solder to make sure the contact is good. And look at that intersection joint. Now we do the same for the other joint. Now, in order to prevent short circuits, we snip this off. I'm using a flush cutter that Element 14 has provided. This one is very high quality, and it's easy to cut leads with it, and opposes any standard one you might find at Home Depot, for example. Now we can move on to resistors. As opposed to diodes, these have no polarity, so we can basically solder them the same way as diodes. Transistors are soldered mostly the same way. As you can see, transistors have three pins, at least the one I have, and they're in a roughly semicircle. To align the pins properly, we align the semicircle to the footprint. And then we turn it upside down and solder it pretty much as we do for any other component. Now we solder the headers. Usually you can use a breadboard when soldering 2.54 millimeter pins to hold the board in place, but without one, you can simply solder one end of the strip and then manually adjust the alignment. For example, 
Watch as I do this. solder one end it's slightly bent so I just move it slightly this way and now it is perfectly aligned and then I work on the rest of the pins I usually start at the other end and then work my way through the rest of the pins First, apply solder to an edge pad and keep applying heat until you're done. Now you should maneuver the chip into place and as I have done here. Now the chip is maneuvered into place and aligned properly, I swing the board around and I begin to solder the rest of the pins. I am actually switching to 0.6 solder right now instead of 0.8. You might cause a solder wick, so it's useful to use flux and solder wick. It's kind of difficult for me to solder right now because my phone's tripod is currently on the PCB, so it's kind of hard to move around, but that is not a problem. It's also useful to pin your light around to make it fit into places. You can really just bridge pins all the way and just rework them with flux later. This is actually probably easier than actually trying to solder them correctly on the first go. The reason why it's kind of messy right now is because I have not properly aligned the chip. So it looks a bit wacky.
my soldering is a bit rusty, and giving pr sufficient practice, you can probably do a much better job than this. Overall though, being able to solder these simple footprints should be able to get you started on simple electronic designs. For more complex footprints, such as higher pitch, sorry, lower pitch ICs or and possibly higher pin counts, you'll require you'll be required to use methods such as drag soldering. This way you can easily fill out say 128 pins without having to manually solder each one and then bridge and then fix any bridge pins. You can also use a stencil and paste. Unfortunately, I do not have these equipment on like available to me, so I cannot demonstrate using stencil and paste and a hot air gun or sand to solder a PCB. But mostly for passives and ICs, these skills should be able to get you most, mostly to... I cannot quite demonstrate some other footprints as I do not have the PCB breakouts for them. These footprints include higher pin count and lower pitch ICs as well as BGA packages. The strategies in this video may be able to solder these more complex footprints it's just generally a better idea to use stencil and paste in order to solder. This strategy requires the use of a hot air gun or a reflow machine, which I do not have available for me, to me. However, the strategies shared in footprints demonstrated should be sufficient for most passives and ICs that you will need for entry-level electronics and PCB design. I hope that this video for new solderers has been useful and you should always feel free to reach out to me on the Element 14 platform if you have any questions.